Jeff Hines are here with another Avs Film Room. Today we're going to take a look at Drew Hellison. I clipped every shift from the first period of his last game against Vermont and one from the second that shows a really nice assist. That's the last clip in this video. Uh, he's number four here on red. And uh, I'm just going to give a little analysis of his time at BC, uh, his play style, where I think he's projecting, and, and I'll comment a bit on some of the plays too. So without further ado, remember he's number four here on red, so just keep an eye on him throughout these clips. Uh, this first shift right here is a very high event shift for him. He's got, he makes some good passes. He makes a really good defensive play. Uh, and then it, to, to cap it off, he, he lands a perfect stretch pass. So this is a good, exciting play. little intro for you guys. Uh, anyways, Tellison, he was drafted out of National Development Program. Here's that first defensive play here. Good stick, gets control, quick pass, shot on net. Too easy. Um, continuing. Drafted out of National Development Program. Uh, his, in 2019, he was a second-round pick. Elite prospects advertised him as a capable defensive defenseman with an impressive compete level and really good hockey sense. He skates well and is a decent puck handler, but stands out as a solid defenseman who rarely makes mistakes and can shut down the top players on the opposing team. Uh, that assessment is still very much accurate, but over the last two seasons, he has really elevated his game primarily with the puck on his stick. Um, now when he's playing, he looks super comfortable with the puck on his stick. Um, his first year at BC, he played really well defensively, but he was really more just always making the safe pass, uh, the quick, easy, safe pass, if not just sending it high off the glass. He was playing very conservative in his first year at BC, um, but he was still very solid defensively. Um, now, when he's got the puck on his stick, he's looking calm, collected, he's patient, he's poised. He will const he will routinely make tape to tape stretch passes. He's just now he's making the smart play. He's not necessarily the safest play. Now he's just always making the smartest play. Um, these the difference in his uh, his puck moving ability is really reflected in his point production. His first year at BC. He had one goal and five assists through 28 games. His sophomore season, he really elevated. He had four goals, 11 assists for 15 points through 22 games. And here we are in his junior year. He currently has one goal and six helpers for seven points in eight games. Uh, one, of those, one of those games and three of those points was a big win against the, the DU Pioneers. And... Um, where he had a goal and two two helpers that night. So he's eating huge minutes for BC at 5-on-5. Five five. He's quarterbacking the power play. He's killing penalties. Um, he's just your, your do-it-all, any situation, big-minute defenseman. And he likes to play physical, but not overly so. He's, he's responsible first and foremost. So um, he can lower the boom when he wants to, but he'll never go for a hit that could take him out of position. With that said, he does use his body to protect the puck and protect the position, uh, you know, to uh, kind of stand his ground. And he uses his body really well. So he's not always just going out there and crushing people, but he can do that when he wants to. Uh, and he does do it pretty frequently. But um, first and foremost, he's responsible. So you're not going to be seeing him go for a huge hit and maybe he crushes the guy, but uh, in turn, he gets caught way out of position and, and they get a break. He's just, he's just too smart for that. Um, and that's not where his mind's at. You know, he, his mind's really at making the, the sound defensive play. Um, and that's always, I feel like that's a, a, a must have in, in today's NHL defenseman. So, uh, what really makes him good, and I know this is cliche, but what, what really makes him stand out. It's his hockey sense or his hockey IQ, whatever you want to call it. Um, he is always in the right spot. And he does that by constantly staying engaged. As you watch him, watch his head here. He, he's, gonna, he's always going to be looking for where everyone else is on the ice. And he always knows where his teammates are. And he always knows where the opposing players are. He's always providing good support for his defensemen. 
Um, and the the probably the most impressive thing that I watch him do, and he does it by uh, being smart, being so smart, and always being in position. But it's his gap control. Um, Hopefully we'll see a good example of it coming up here. We've already seen it a couple times, but um, just in the way he positions himself, he'll never position himself too high to where he'll get beat behind him or too low or sorry, too high where he's going to have a, a uh, an attacker barreling down on him with speed and control of the puck. He's never going to give a player that much space. Um, and in, in turn, he's also never going to be so low that he could possibly get beat behind him. He's just, he's not the flashiest player, but the puck doesn't go in a whole lot when he's on the ice, and it sure does go in a whole lot when he's on the ice. So, um, Drew Hellison, I feel like he's got a very bright future ahead of him. He's a right handed defenseman. Uh, Elite Prospects has him listed at six foot three and 190 pounds. I don't know when that was last updated, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's pretty outdated, and, and he's uh, quite a bit at least heavier now, if not, and, you know, an inch or so taller as well. So, um, I think this is going to be his last year at, uh, at BC. I'd be surprised if he doesn't turn pro after the season. He took a little cross-checking penalty there. Um, that's okay. It happens. Yeah. As I was saying, I, I'd be surprised if he goes back to BC after this season the game is just moving at, you know, it's it honestly it looks easy out there for him. It's moving at too slow of a pace. Um, I don't think he would be challenged enough if he were to stay another year at BC. Uh, he already won uh, what was the award like Defensive Player of the Year in Hockey East in his sophomore season. Um, I I just think it's time for him to take the next step, and I think we'll see him sign his ELC. Uh, as soon as his college his college season ends this year. Um, pretty exciting stuff for Avalanche fans. Uh, another little perk to this video, 27, Colby Ambrosio, um, is a really, really good player. Another Avalanche prospect. He's a feisty little guy. He's a lot of fun to watch. Here's Hellison quarterback in the power play. Um, Ambrosio, though, he's, he's a feisty little guy. Number 27, um, he he's always digging in the corners. He's always in players' grills after the play. He forechecks hard. He's really skilled. He's a really good skater. Um, there's a lot to like out of out of Ambrosio, and it'll be interesting to see how he develops. Um, but that's Drew Hellison for you. I'm gonna let the the rest of this video run. Um, I think he'll he'll slot in. You know. That's the thing with with uh, Baron coming up and EJ still on the team. It's gonna there's gonna be quite a competition. I feel like for those for these right-handed defensemen. But I I don't know. I got a feeling about Hellison. I think this guy's gonna be uh, at least a number three defenseman on the Avs and probably a number two defenseman on just about any other team. So, but with EJ and Baron and McCarr, I mean that's. That's a lot of competition and on, on it for any of the top six spots, but um, pretty good problem to have in my opinion. So that's Drew Hellison. He's having a heck of a year. And uh, if you keep watching here at the very end of this video, you're going to see him set up a really nice goal, um, beautiful assist. He had two assists in this game. They won this game, I believe, three to one, maybe three to two. So that's that. That's all from me. Enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks for watching.